Glory and power be unto you, O oh God. Please help me welcome Miss Carolyn McKenzie to Atlanta Live. Welcome. <laughs> okay. I'm the founder and president of Mental Health in the African American Community. We are an international nonprofit agency that's based in Stockbridge, Georgia. And the reason why I put a lot of emphasis on international is because when I was in the hospital, you know, recovering from the wounds, and we'll talk about my story as to why I started this. I said, God, I will create with your guidance the most phenomenal nonprofit agency that the world has ever seen, not just Atlanta, not the United States, but the world. So that's why I put a lot of emphasis on this is an international nonprofit agency. So, what inspired you to start this agency? One of the greatest loves of my life, my niece, who I raised from birth, everything she touched turned to gold. She was so academic. She made A's and B's in high school and college. And she's always been an entrepreneur, just like me. And every business that she ever started, she just succeeded. When she was 16, I think, she was teaching algebra um, for a government-funded program and was making $50 an hour. And I was getting ready to nominate her for Black Girls Rock. She had just built a house from scratch, had bought a new Lexus, and she started having a mental meltdown. We talked on the phone every day. And this particular day, I detected something different in her voice. Mm -hmm. So I immediately um, asked her what was going on, and she told me that she hadn't slept in a week. Mm -hmm. So I said, you mean not one wink in a week? She says, not at all. She says, I just toss and turn all night, and I get up and I walk the floor all night. She said, my husband give me hot baths, and nothing is helping. You need to get in the car right now and go to the emergency room and tell them 
that you haven't slept in a week and they'll know what to do because this is really serious. Mm -hmm. I said that's why you're having these thoughts because your brain is oxygen deprived and so they gave her a shot and some pills and the next day she called me and she sounded lucid. And a couple of days passed by and she called me in the middle of the night. She had taken her insurance papers and all the other important documents and put them on the sofa so her husband could find them. You know what that means. Mm. She was going to check out. And I was going to take it back that Tuesday. And that Tuesday morning, June 14, 2011, at 5.30 a.m., I was in the shower. I said, baby, I'm going to jump in the shower, so when I get dressed, I'm going to call you when I get in the car, which is what we did every day. We mm -hmm. talked on the phone every morning, every morning. She's my best friend. Mm -hmm. A few seconds after I get in the shower, she opens the shower door, and she's standing there with the largest butcher knife from my kitchen. My baby had a psychotic break, and I never saw that coming. And the first words that came out of her mouth were, I'm going to kill you, then kill myself. So before I could process that, the first stab was to the left side of my head. So blood starts spewing, and I had no time to process anything except save her life and save mine. And I, I kept calling her name. Tasha, this is me, this is mom, this is auntie. And she couldn't hear me. So I start fighting to take the knife away. And I slipped out of the shower on the floor. And she was on top of me. And so I said, well, okay, God, I guess this is it. So I managed to take the knife a couple of times. In the process of taking the knife, she squeezed my hand down so tight that it severed my tendons in my right index finger. I had to have two surgeries. And so it was a huge struggle. And I'm here being cut and bitten. She bit two big chunks of flesh out of my both arms. And so I know that's graphic, but I needed to paint the picture so you can see how severe mm -hmm. it is um, and why I have to do this. So she didn't recognize my voice, but she recognized a voice that we all know. So when I surrendered and I said, God, this is it. She's killing me, you know, I can't breathe now because she's choking me. And can you tell my family I say goodbye because I am dying right now? He says, no, you're not. And the words came, came out of my mouth. I remember the house trembling. The words were so strong, they were saying, no, it is not over. She recognized that voice because it was not my voice. And she was lifted up and she walked out. And I passed out, apparently. And next thing I remember, I woke up and I was on the floor. And I thought I had a nightmare. But then I realized that that was my blood all over the place. It was so much blood. I was just bleeding, still bleeding so bad. So I climbed out of the window. I went for my phone, but she had taken my phone. I went to my neighbors and they called the cops. So they were there in seconds. And so my neighbors were wrapping me in towels and giving me water and just trying to, you know, hydrate me. Mm -hmm. And so I kept telling them to go in the house and get my baby because she said she was going to hurt herself. They said, no, we're going to take you to the hospital. We're going to take you right now, take you right now. So, so fast forward, Day, two days went by and I'm still asking for my baby. So the director of nursing came in and she told me that she had killed herself. And I, I, I go, how, how? I don't understand. I cried and I said, God, what am I supposed to do now? He says, well, before I answer that question for you, which I'm not going to answer because you will, let me tell you something. He says, your baby saved your life. I said, oh my God, you're absolutely right. That sounds like an oxymoron. This is the woman who stabbed me almost to death and almost choked me. And God says, she saved your life. He says, you know what? You're so right. So he says, now I ask you, what are you going to do? I said, well, it's a no-brainer. I'm a business consultant for nonprofits. I'm going to set up the world's greatest, the most phenomenal nonprofit that the world has ever seen. My baby saved my life. Therefore, she will never die. So that's why. I mean, this is mm -hmm. just, it's, it's so uh, touching, but it's also so healing. And I feel the healing power of God really blessing um, someone out there that you were thinking about taking your life but I declare in the name of Jesus that you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord God Almighty he has a plan for your life so um, let's so she was dealing with mental illness and what are some of the early signs of yes. mental illness I mean, did you see any signs other than the phone call that you received no 
and and that's why you know um, we have the agency yes. because I want what we will do and what we have been doing since 2011 is educating yes. educating the general public not just African Americans we call it mental health in the African American community because mm -hmm. this is my niece's legacy and she's African American but we are rolling out programs mental health in the Asian community mental health in the Latino community mental health in the Caribbean mental health period in the Indian community the ethnic population seem to think that mental illness this is a Caucasian illness mm -hmm. and so we need to first of all let them know what the warning signs are mm -hmm. and then secondly so they can understand that there's treatment and then that there's a huge stigma in the ethnic within the ethnic population mm -hmm. about mental illness some of the, the races take their family members back to their country because they're so embarrassed mm -hmm. because of the stigma so right. warning signs um, I did research, so my niece was never diagnosed. She was never, she had never gone to a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. But after researching, I realized that she had a psychotic break, which was triggered by schizophrenic episode. So my niece had an underlying schizophrenia. Okay. And so that's when you hallucinate, you hear voices, and the voices were telling her to kill me mm -hmm. and to kill herself. So that's schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. If someone is clinically depressed, that means they, they, they lose their sexual appetite, they lose their physical appetite they lose energy they don't have any energy have no desire to hang out with their friends they don't want to they're not productive on their job that's clinical depression mm -hmm. those are signs of that and then a person another person may be on extreme highs and extreme lows you know um, tomorrow they may go shopping and spend two thousand dollars that they didn't have run up all their credit cards and then two days later they're in the bed and they can't get out mm -hmm. they can't even wear the clothes that they purchased that's those are symptoms of bipolar right. so there's so many different you know types of mental illnesses and people can go to our website which is mhiaac.org mhiaac.org and you'll see all the different types of mental illnesses and resources that are available for people who think they may have a mental illness and then every monday night at our national headquarters international headquarters we have an open discussion called let's talk about it mental illness and we're getting ready to take it all over metro atlanta and throughout the world oh wonderful i was just looking at what is the mental health fair and, and walk yes um in 2013 guy gave me the concept for mental health fair you know there's a lot of health fairs prostate cancer diabetes hip blah 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 he said but we're gonna put the focus on mental health so 2014 we had the first uh, we had the inaugural mental health fair we had um, mental health providers there doing workshops understanding mental illness nutrition which is you are what you eat um, exercise is medicine for the brain and then we had some people who have mental illness diagnosis who are under treatment and they're in successful recovery so they came to share their story this year we added the walk so we had the mental health fair which mm -hmm. is what we had last year and we added the walk and we got so many people more involved with fraternities sororities colleges uh, universities high schools community organizations churches government agencies all came together we had about 50 vendors that was at Morehouse School of Religion Mm -hmm. and um, keeping it real and we marked, walked down Martin Luther King and came back and then we did the same and that was on May 16th mm -hmm. and um, we had a fashion talent show we had gospel music our director of entertainment is is um, is a gospel recording artist and she wrote a song for us with for our thing which is remove the stigma break the chains of silence and we did the same thing in Jacksonville Florida on May 30th so next year I think we'll be in 10 cities with the mental health fair and walk so what are you all planning to do here uh, in September you all have something coming up oh right? yes yeah. Uh, suicide prevention. Oh, wow. um, September, the first week in September is Suicide Prevention Week. So we have an initiative called I Choose to Live. We'll have a rally wow. and then we'll have a forum with panels. And we'll do the same thing in Jacksonville, Florida, which is our national training camp. And next year we'll have the same programs in 10 other cities with the Mental Health Fair Walk also. So where do you see uh, mental health um, in the African community in the next five years? We'll be in every major city and five countries and rural community as well as at least five rural communities starting in my hometown. Wow. That's where we'll be. Wow. And what would you say uh, to 
you know, anyone out there that, that's dealing with mental illness or they might suspect that one of their family members, you know, have, uh, is suffering with this disease, what would you encourage them to do? Well, if it's serious, if it's life-threatening, dial 911. And if it's not at that point, please go to our website. Come to our Let's Talk About It on Monday evenings. Um, the website has my phone number on it, mhiaac.org. Mm -hmm. We have a very robust Facebook, you know, facebook.com forward slash mhiaac. Go to our Facebook. But if it's an emergency, you have to dial 911. And you can also do a 1013. You can tell the, the, the 911 operator that this is really serious. But if it's not serious and you're just seeking for information and resources, mm -hmm. how to help yourself and to help others, we encourage you to get involved in our program we have so many programs and they're listed on the website. Wow. Well, thank you, Ms. McKenzie, for joining us here on Atlanta Live. You have been truly a blessing oh, and thank thanks you. for all that you're doing to change lives. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to go back over to the music set where Ms. Deborah Brown is going to sing Love Looking for Love too.